everyone, welcome to the next video in the series Git for the CellsLogix developer. In this video we're going to take a look at how to set up your initial repository, which really comes down to two steps. The first part of that is, is exporting your CellsLogix model and putting that under Git source control. Second part is sharing that model uh, using something like GitHub, and that's what we'll use in this video. So, a few things to to, to mention before we get too far into this. When you first set up a database for CellsLogix and you open that up in Application Architect, all of the model, meaning the entities and the rules and the, the quick forms and smart parts, all of that, the, the definition of the project of the CellsLogix client portal, all of that is contained in a table in the database called the virtual file system. That model in order for it to be put under source control, it needs to be exported to the file system. We'll put it then under source control and be able to push it to GitHub. So the steps that we're going to go through here are the steps that you would take to put your current project or any new projects under source control. So in order to get this under source control, let's export our model. I'll, you can see here in the Project Explorer, I'm working on the VFS in my database name. So, if I go to the Project Workspaces, which I can get to by going View, Project Workspace Manager, that'll open up a view here where I can create a new workspace that'll exist on the file system. So I'm going to right click and select Add, and I like to have my names be consistent between the database name, the, the pro repository name, so I'm going to give this the same name as my database, which will be CellsLogix eval virtual. Now I'm also going to tell it where on the file system to place my CellsLogix model. So I have a directory here I'll create. Now the most important part of this is to check the box that says export files upon creation. What that does is tells the application architect to export my current working model from the VFS table into that directory on the file system. So basically making a copy of the entire CellsLogix model. I'll click create and it'll start going through that process of extracting all of that and putting it on the file system. Okay, now that that's done, I can see in my project workspaces a new entry there. Also, it automatically switched me over to my new uh, CellsLogix model that exists in the file system. So now as I work in all of these, it's actually manipulating the files that have been placed on the file system for me. So the next step is now to put that model under Git source control. And there are several different ways to do that. I'm going to use a method that's built into Git extensions for CellsLogix. The benefit of doing it within Application Architect using Git extensions for CellsLogix is it does some additional steps for you on top of just putting the, the directory under source control. And I, I can do that by just attempting to use any of these functions that are built into the toolbar now. Uh, I'll use this browse git repository and it'll tell me the current workspace directory is not under git source control. And it's asking me, do, it, do you want me to, to create a git repository for that directory? And if I say yes, it's also going to add a git ignore file to that directory. We're going to talk about git ignores in a future uh, post in this series, but basically a git ignore allows you to selectively ignore certain parts of that directory structure to not put that under source control. We do want that for a CellsLogix model because there are parts of that that are kind of temporary things that are when we do a build and deploy, we don't necessarily want to include that in source control because that means when I do a build and deploy, that's changed those files and now everyone else has to deal with merging that change in. So we're going to say yes, or it's bring up a dialog that allows us to create that directory as a Git repository. So I'll just leave everything as it is and click the initialize button. And it tells us that it's now initialized an empty Git repository in this location that's listed here. You'll see it, add, it created a .git folder that is the repository files. Now, it does say an empty Git repository. So even though that directory 
now is contains a git repository, we still have to add the files in that directory structure into the repository. And we do that through a commit, and there's two parts of a commit. When I click the commit button here, it brings up the commit dialog, and it's scanning for the files in that directory structure, excluding those ones that are specified in the git ignore file. But there are two parts to commit. One is to stage the files you want to commit, and then the other part of that is actually doing the commit. So I want to stage all of these files. I'm putting all of my model into source control. So I can click the staged files menu and click stage all. It's going to take a first time that you do this on a new on a new uh, Cells Logix model because it's staging everything to be committed. But what we're doing now is we're we're telling Git here's the files that I have, I'm going to, I want you to know about them so that when I commit I include these in the commit. Now that all the files are staged I can go ahead and do the commit part of this now. I'm going to add a commit comment which is required part of a commit and now I'm going to click the commit button which will now take all of those files that I've staged and actually commit them to my repository. It's creating a point in time in my repository that I can go back and see here's exactly what the state of things were at that date and time when I did that commit. And here's all the changes that might have occurred since then. The commit is complete and I have a dialog telling me everything that is done. I'll click OK. And at this point, all of my model is now under source control. If I didn't care to use this other side of this to, to share my repository on GitHub so that other developers could work with it, I, I am complete set up and ready to go right now as far as just working locally. However, I have other people on my development team and I need to share this CellsLogix model with them so that we can all work on this project together. Now we use GitHub for that at Customer Effects and I have another post that outlines how we typically use GitHub. So I'm going to go to GitHub and uh, normally for me we, I would log into the corporate account to create the new repository under the corporate account and then add my own developer account as a collaborator on that. For this sample though I'm going to use the test account that I created in the earlier video. So I'm going to click New Repository, and I'll give it a name. And I'll click Create Repository. If, I had, if this were a paid account, I would select this Private option here. So now I have a, an empty repository created on GitHub. I, what I need to do now is tie this online repository to my local one. So I can do what's called a push, to push commits I've made in my local repository to the online one. So I'm going to cl click this uh, button here to copy this URL that GitHub gives me. This is kind of the link to this online repository. Now in Application Architect, to link this up to my local repository, I'm going to go to the Git Extensions menu and Manage Remote Repositories. In the world of Git, the central repository uh, is always called Origin. So I'm going to give it the same name. And then my URL is the URL that I got from my online repository I created on GitHub. I'm going to click the Save button. And when I do that, it's going to ask me, do, you, do we want to automatically configure the default push and pull behavior? What that means is that I can tell it so that whenever I do a push, I don't have to choose which repository I'm pushing to. In Git, I, it is possible I set up multiple online repositories, one of them being the main central one. But, and, and we don't want to have to select that every time. So we're going to say yes so that we can configure that. Now, I have an error because this is the first time I've used, um, I, I, this is the first time I've, I've been working with Git and GitHub on this machine. So what it's telling me is that PuTTY doesn't have the servers, GitHub's uh, SSH key cached in the registry, and, and PuTTY wants that. So 
There's a few different ways that you can do that. To make it easy though, I've included with the post that accompanies this video a registry file that you can use to automatically add that into the registry. I have that in my desktop here. And I'll just execute that and that'll put the the right entry in the registry cache for putty. Now when I do that again, I'll just click save. I don't get any of that and I can go over and do, configure the default push and pull behavior so that the local branch is master, my remote repository will be my origin, and then the branch on origin that I want to merge with by default is called master. And I'll click save. Now I'm all configured and set up so that I can push to the online repository. If in Application Architect, I'm going to click the Push to Get Repository button, and now click Push to push to that repository. And it's telling me the online repository doesn't have a branch called Master. My local does, because I've made a commit to that. Do you want to add that? And I'll, of course I do, so I'll say yes. And now it's going through the process of pushing any commits that are in my local repository, which I only have one, to the online repository. Our push is now complete. So I'm going to click OK to close that dialog and now I can flip back over to GitHub and refresh my repository page and I can see now that my model now exists on GitHub. I can browse into that and see the same set of folders minus what I'm excluding from my gitignore now exists on GitHub. So that's the one side of the equation, the, the setting up of the initial repository. If I'm a single developer and I want to use GitHub to host my projects, that's the whole picture right there. But if you do work with other developers, there's another part to this which includes them pulling this repository from GitHub so that they can work on it locally. I'm going to break that into a separate video. Uh, but for now, this concludes the video that will outline the steps to set up the initial repository. Join me in the next video in the Git for the Sales Logics developer series.